Hey everyone, I hope you're all having an awesome day today. It is Vintage Pokey Openings, and if you've been following my channel all the way from the beginning, you know that this video is already special for at least one reason, and that's because this is the first time I've ever shown my face on camera. So we've started off with that. However, today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different than we usually do. I know I typically open vintage Watsy product on this channel, and we will be doing that much more in the future, but I wanted to make an informational video about a hotly contested topic in the Pokemon community, which is weighing booster packs. So if you're someone who is not familiar with the Pokemon trading card game or trading cards in general, and you're wondering what I mean by weighing a booster pack, typically, the heavier booster packs contain the rare holographic cards. That is especially particular with the vintage Wizards of the Coast Pokemon products that you probably collected when you were a kid. I'm not as familiar with the modern TCG, but I'm sure it's a problem with the modern TCG as well. So all the way back, dating to the base set in 1999, people figured out that if you bought a booster box and you took the 36 packs out and you weighed them out, you could keep the 12 heaviest packs and likely pull all of the holographic cards out of that booster box, and then you could sell the remaining packs, which are what we consider light. Now, in the current market, that's a big problem because people will take packs that they willingly know are light and likely do not have a chance of ho having a holographic card, and they will weigh them out and they will sell them on eBay as unweighed booster packs. So the buyer on eBay thinks that they're getting a legitimate chance of pulling a rare holographic card, when in reality, they paid an exorbitant amount of money for a vintage booster pack that does not have a holographic card in it. So. That is what weighing a booster pack is, and I wanted to define that before we actually talked any more about the topic. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Pokemon or unfamiliar with vintage Pokemon, you might be asking yourself, what is considered a pack that would have a holographic card versus not? Well, what we consider a quote-unquote heavy booster pack is anything 21 grams or above. If you really want to be specific or you really want to have a good chance of getting a hollow, I recommend 21.2 grams or above. But you still have a good chance the 21 or above. Anything under 21 is generally considered a light pack. Now, that is not a foolproof method. You can still pull a holographic card from something under 21 grams, and you can still not pull a holographic card from something over 21 grams, but that is the general rule of thumb. It also kind of depends on what set you're weighing. Base set, Jungle, and Fossil were made with what is called the Galaxy Holofoil, which is different from Base Set to Onwards, which was made with the Cosmos Holofoil. For whatever reason, Base Set, Jungle, and Fossil are much easier to weigh, and they follow that 21 gram threshold much more closely than the subsequent sets do. Base Set 2, Team Rocket, Gym Heroes, Gym Challenge, Legendary Collection, the Neo sets, all of those sets seem to be a little bit tougher to weigh. For example, I had a heavy fossil booster pack my girlfriend bought me for our anniversary. It was 21.15 grams and it pulled a non holo ditto. On the flip side, I opened a very light first edition Gym Heroes booster pack that was 20.69 grams and I pulled a holographic first edition Brock Trainer card. So like I said, it isn't 100% accurate, but typically if you have a pack over 21 grams, it's heavy and if it's under 21 grams, it is light. Now the ultimate question of this video is, is weighing booster packs ethical? In my opinion, if you are going to weigh the booster pack and you are going to sell it with the weight displayed, that is not unethical. That way I know if I'm willingly buying a heavy pack, if I'm willingly buying a light pack, or if I'm buying one that might be in between. If you weigh, it out, weigh out a pack and it comes out to be like 20.42 grams, there is an extremely low, if not 0% chance it's going to have a hollow. So if you go ahead and sell it on eBay as an unweighed booster pack, that is deceitful, you are deceiving the buyer, and therefore that is unethical. So that's my personal opinion on the topic. Now the reason why I'm talking to you about this today is because I want to show you how to weigh packs and I want to tell you about a story. I recently found a base set two booster pack on eBay that was weighing on a scale as 23 grams. Now I knew that this was inaccurate because the seller was weighing it on a whole gram scale. You need to have a milligram scale to be able to accurately weigh the packs. But I still said to myself, well, if the scale is even two full grams off, which would be a lot, it's still going to be a roughly 21 gram pack and I have a chance to pull a hollow. And I would love to open a heavy base set two pack on our channel. We would have the chance of pulling a Charizard, a Blastoise, a Venusaur, and even my personal favorite, a holographic Pidgeot. 
So I bid on the pack. Actually, no, I didn't bid on it. I offered the person, I think it was $120 and we ended up settling on like 130, which is a pretty darn good price for even a light base at two booster pack. Well, I ended up getting the pack and I always cross reference my packs and weigh them to see if it matches what the seller showed me. And of course the pack ended up weighing out to be, I think 20.61 grams, somewhere in the ballpark of that. So we were way off from a heavy booster pack and it likely did not have a holographic card. Now, I've opened light packs on the channel before. If you've watched all my videos, you know that sometimes we don't pull a hollow and sometimes we do. But I spent the money with the intention of it being a heavy pack, so I had no interest in opening it really at that point anymore since it weighed light. And I felt like the buy or the seller, I should say, had kind of deceived me a bit. Almost like they knew that the scale was off or that that wasn't the accurate weight of the pack and they wanted to sell it anyway. So I requested a refund from eBay and in the description I explained that this is nowhere near a heavy pack, that in the description the person advertised it as a heavy booster pack and that is not the case. So I sent in my refund request even though the person does not accept refunds and they came back to me with a message that basically said, hey, you know, I don't know why your scale said that because mine said 23 grams, but if you want I'll give you a $100 refund. Now the terms of this refund was not only do I get the $100, but I get to keep the booster pack as well. So I said, well, a light base set two booster packs for, for about $40 or so, why would I not take that offer? So I took the offer, <clears throat> I got the pack for like 40 bucks, and even though it's light, that is a really cheap Watsi booster pack. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with it just yet. I might open it on the channel. Um, I may just hang on to it for a while. I don't know yet, but I wanna show you how this pack weighs out on a whole gram scale versus a milligram scale and give you guys a little bit of a tutorial on how to weigh booster packs. All right, guys, so here we have two scales at our disposal. I apologize for the glare. Um, but if you look at the scale on the left and you look at the scale on the right, this right here is a milligram scale. You can see because it goes out two decimals. And this right here is a whole gram scale. And you can see because if I put my finger on it, for example, you just saw there that it only shows whole grams. So like 21 grams or 20 grams or 22 grams. If you're gonna be weighing packs, like if you're gonna buy a heavy pack online and you wanna confirm that it's heavy, make sure you get a milligram scale right here because that's gonna give you the accurate results. I'll show you what I mean. If I put this Pidgeot Base Set 2 Booster Pack, and yes, this is the one that I bought on eBay. If I put this on the scale, it actually should be a little bit heavier than that. Yeah, so you can see there, it's showing about, well, let's give it a sec. It's about 20.6 grams, which is super light, highly unlikely that it has a holographic card. This is the scale I used to cross-reference with the eBay listing to basically prove that the seller um, did not have a scale that was accurate. Because then I also put the pack on this scale and you can see it's showing 21 grams. So theoretically, if I went ahead and put this on eBay, I could say, oh, 21 gram heavy pack and deceive a lot of people. I mean, a smart buyer or someone who's familiar with Wizards of the Coast is not gonna take that as accurate. But that's just one example of how scales can be deceiving and that really the milligram scales are the only ones that are accurate. Now, another reason why I recommend doing the milligram scale or I should say buying a milligram scale and kind of doing your own cross-reference when you get the pack is because it's really easy to deceive a buyer on eBay. So like for example, I put this simple little Pikachu coin and it weighs out about 1.14 grams. I put the Pidgeot pack over it. Oh yeah, you know, looks legit. There's the pack sitting on the scale, a very heavy 21.75 gram pack, but you know what? There's a coin or a penny or a nickel underneath. So it's easy to just be deceived with the weighing of packs on eBay, which is like I said, if you're going to buy a pack on eBay, like a heavy pack, just cross-reference it with your own scale once uh, it gets shipped to you and try the eBay return method that I recommended if it comes back and it's drastically different than what you bought it for. If you guys liked today's video, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Whatever you can do to support the channel is greatly appreciated and look forward to more videos in the future. Thank you.